Moving on, we will move on to item G, district matters. And the first item is the presentation of the fiscal year 2017 and 18 audit of financial statements. And we have Michael O'Connor. Would you like to take the foot? Thank you. Um, I'm here to present the financial statements, and I work for CPA firm RJ McCarty, and obviously in charge auditor. Um, feel free to uh, interrupt me with questions at any time from the presentation. There, there are two reports. One is the basic financial statements, and one is a management report. <clears throat> so I just want to go with the basic financial statements first. So on page one of the uh, of the report is our audit opinion, which is on pages one and two, and it is a uh, what's called an unmodified opinion. And there are no qualifications. There's no issues. Everything was done in compliance with the uh, with standards. So this is the best opinion you can get. It will be on our letterhead and a lot of our contact information. We do work for the board. If the board ever have questions of me or our CPA firm, you can contact us at any time. Next, I'd like to turn to page page eight. Page eight is the <clears throat> Statement of net position, and this is a snapshot of uh, June 30, 2018. And <clears throat> it's basically, it, it's done on a full accrual basis, like you're a for profit corporation, <clears throat> and it has your assets and liabilities and, and your net position, which is basically your assets, but less your, uh, less your liabilities. <clears throat> the district has a deficit of $5.2 million in net position. I just wanted to point that out. And on page eight, uh, nine is your statement of activities. <clears throat> this is also done on the full accrual basis. It starts with your expenditures. Uh, governments are in the business of providing services, so those are the costs. that are on the left side there, the costs of the, those services. Then it has fees that you charge for recreation programs. And then what's left over for the taxpayers to subsidize. So the fifth line from the bottom, you have a change in that position of about $530,000 positive. So you have excess of revenue over expenditures. There is a prior period adjustment um, <clears throat> for basically $5.7 million. There is a new GASB, a new accounting standard that came in that you have to now record your uh, post-employment retiree health benefits, the liability that's calculated by an outside actuarial firm on your financial statements. And that's what's the key thing that's put you in the deficit this year. And this prior period adjustment is the number that was a year ago that started the year. Uh, and so that is put down on that statement. There is a note in the back of the financial statements that explains that. So on page 10, you have your balance sheet. This is what's done on the modified accrual basis. It's almost similar to a cash basis. In your general fund, the second line from the bottom, you have almost $2.6 million in fund balance available in the general fund. And then you have a measure A fund with $172,000 available in that fund. Some people don't, a lot of people don't understand the full accrual basis, so this is a little more easier to understand, having these modified accrual basis statements. The next page, 12, is um, basically your, similar to the statement of activities, it shows all your revenue and expenditures for the year. Um, so just the third line from the bottom, under general fund, you had an excess of almost $700,000 Revenue over expenditures in the general fund. And then measure A, you had $70,000 of revenue over expenditures. You had a debt service fund, with the, um, which is now gone. It was related to a, a bond or debt that you had that's been paid off during this fiscal year. And that's all I wanted to point out on these financial statements. Okay. Uh, questions from the board? 
you mentioned the um, 5.6 million prior period adjustment which relates to GASP 75. Right. Um, there is also a um, change in assumption um, that is listed on page 30 and 37 to the tune of roughly $2.5 million. Could you please um, tell us about that? Page, page 30 is the first instance, um, which is in note 11. Um, it relates to OPEM, but um, it's, it has a... Oh, deferred inflows. The change in assumption, the 2.175. Yeah. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, 2.465. So it's 2.465, it's on page 30, that's note 11, so... Page 30. <clears throat> Change in assumptions. Yes, yeah, so these, these are actuarial uh, figures uh, for the change in assumptions, and these are just how actuarial calculus. I'm not an actuary, so I'm not exactly sure how they come up with the change in assumptions, but obviously there are changes in whatever they're assuming in, in calculating this liability. They have 2.4 kind of change in assumptions. There's a 2.4 figure here, and then 2.1 on on page 31. <coughs> page 31. What was your question on 31? It's it's the mysterious changes in assumptions that I wanted some light on. Oh, the two million one set. Yeah. Okay, so on the deferred inflows, I know what that is. That is. Um, when they calculate gains on investments and they allocate them over a period of years, they don't hit you in one year with gains or losses, so they're allocated out. So that's what this deferred inflows on. Oh, all right, so um, I'm still as fuzzy as I was before, but um, I'll move to, pay the, to well, question number. Can I help for a second? Yes, please. So, what he's saying on page 31, the deferred inflows, that's coming basically because we have that open trust fund. So he's saying that that's it what you... It is directly related to it. Okay? Well, yes, and it's saying that that is what you can, uh, uh, again, to Michael's point, um, you know, over a period of 30 some odd years based on that initial 60,000 uh, and that being a low water mark for where to contribute on an annual basis. So all of these numbers come from the actuarial report that the that when the OPEB person, Gary Klein, came in and delivered that report. So these numbers come out of a different report that are then given from the actuary that are then given to the auditor to incorporate into our audited financials as well as into our uh, financial statements. But it seems like because of our policy of allocating at least $60,000 every year, we are starting to realize a decrease in Correct. our um, liability. Correct. Okay. So, thank you. Um, and then, um, question which might be more along your lines then. Um, what is, there is um, such a thing as um, um, a benchmark for fund balance percentage, like uh, for the health of the organization to be able to kind of cover your annual expenses um, based on how much you have in your fund balance. Is there some kind of uh, Goldilocks number that um, institutions like ours should be looking for? Um, no, it's, it's very subjective. If you want to have reserves, if you see things coming in the future, capital replacement, you know, you know with, the, with, the, with the buildings and improvements, you know, the parks and whatnot, if you see that coming, you can reserve money for those. So it has those issues in there. I mean, you have the issues with the, you know, the OPEB liability, and and your also your pension plan liability. So those things that you can, you know, reserve money for. But as far as your operating budget on an annual basis, I mean, it, it yeah, if you can afford it, it'd be great to build up a reserve of one year's of the operating budget for the district. Um, that's rare. It does happen. Um, but I mean, it, you want at least three months for the operating expenditures um, in there, so you probably would want to have, <coughs> you know, 25, 30 percent minimum of your operating expenses. 
in, in front of the house, but you obviously want to build up more than that. So, I mean, that would be the minimum. Thank you. So just like super high level executive summary, we are plus half a million dollars um, in terms of operating revenue, of operating um, profit, whatever. Oh, I see. That. So you have that position. Thank you. Yeah. And um, our biggest issues are the OPEP. Mm -hmm. Right. And the pensions, yeah. But those, so those liabilities are not being payable for many years. Right. The district is making payments on that. Yeah. So they're you know, they're making the payments over there, they're, they're paying all the bills. The future of those liabilities is not certain. I mean they could draw a lot. They, I don't see them going up. So but I mean they could they could draw. Different changes could happen there. But um, so anyway, but they are way out in the future and the district is is making their payments on all those liabilities. So. I read something in the uh, report that indicated that the uh, discount rate was going to continue at 715. My understanding was that CalPERS was going to drop it to 7%. That's correct. That's what I heard too. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, I also read in here, and I hope I didn't misinterpret, well, I hope I misinterpreted it, that the uh, safety contributions to pensions are now approaching 40% of the covered payroll. Okay. That's a little frightening. So one thing that's happening is PERS is raising, mm -hmm. you know, they are going up. And the district has been making the payments, but they may, will probably continue to raise them. Yes. In order to get the slide to look at that. Yeah, because this is not only future indebtedness. This is cash payments that are going out the door every year and right. they're increasing dramatically. So exactly. that is of concern. Thank you. Okay. Uh, questions down here? Thank you. I'm good. Okay. Any questions? Uh, from hold on. Thank you. Michael, on page 32, that's basically our uh, P&L for the fiscal year, correct? Is that a very condensed version of it anyway? This, this is the budget tax one, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So if you're looking just for the single fiscal year performance of revenue versus expenditure, that's the cleanest page to look at without getting confused by net positions and everything else. Correct. So, uh, yes, you mean in excess of revenue over expenditure. Right. Because in net position, then we're also taking into account depreciations and gains and assets and everything else, not to mention all of the items that, uh, that they have just discussed between these long term liabilities. That's correct. Yeah. And then I also realized, did you want to talk about the board and management report, or is that just so in the management report? Mm -hmm. Um, what we do in the uh, during the course of the audit, we looked at the district's controls over their assets and their safety audit, guarding them against loss, mostly due to error and fraud. The only issue that we had in there was a payroll tax return reconciliation that the district is is working on. Completed, they file annual four quarterly payroll tax returns. It's reconciling those numbers to their general ledger and having a formal reconciliation for this. And that's something they're working on and implementing. So. Great. There were two recommendations, I think, that were made in the second one. And I'm, I'm trying to get clear in my mind as to whether um, you and your firm agree that we have addressed the second issue about uh, policy and procedure or if we have work to do. Yes, uh, Eric has developed a lot of um, written procedures, so I think that that has been addressed. Yes. It has been addressed completely, i.e. you're not looking for desk procedures or something like that. You know, I think it, I think it has. Uh, I mean, there it's possible. Possible, possible could be added to it, but I mean, he's covered so much mm -hmm. at this point, so it, it's more than adequate. Okay. So, uh, All right. Very good. Fair enough. Thank you. All right. Any questions, comments from the public? Steve. Um, yeah. Well, first of all, I want to point out that I have not been distributed um, the copies of the uh, agenda packet as required. Um, by I think the law, uh, the Brown Act for sure, um, you're supposed to get it if you request it. And so I can't really follow along, so I'm going to just do a few things by memory. Um, there is a lot of, first of all, this is the, the highest deficit uh, that I can recall. Um, and I know a part of that is the OPED, well, the the, the retirement liabilities. 
Um, and I have a, uh, a question which I'm just going to throw out there. Um, since 80 per, or 60 to 80 percent of our firefighters' uh, calls are uh, conducted in the city of San Rafael, how much is the city of San Rafael paying towards the retirement benefits of our firefighters? Now, I know the answer to that, and I believe it's none. And, um, Wait, so Stephen, we're and, just talking about the, fin the audited financial statements? That yeah. Are completely off topic. Well, I'm sorry, but you, I mean, I would love to talk numbers with you. The other thing so is... The agenda is, was posted online last week, and the copies can be mailed available in advance. So you're well, not, you're you know, you started this. The, you started. You started off by quoting, I, and I don't know what it was that you were quoting, but it sounded like law. And I'm asking you to simply follow the law. I agree to follow the law as well. Um, there are uh, there's a lawsuit out there with some 90 year old uh, Steven, people that have been Steven, here, which is also another. No, Steven, I'm not. Actually, I'm talking about the budget, Leah. No, you, this is not Would you in the please budget. not interrupt this me and allow me to speak? Morning, okay? Are you going to allow Steven, me to speak? Stephen, you are not. You're interrupting me. Okay, Stephen, we're done. Okay, we're moving on to the next item. Um, is there anything further from the board for our time frame? Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just thank you to Michael and Arjuna. As always, they're very easy and nice to uh, work with and uh, are patient with me. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, Eric.